What's going on YouTube? Thank you for checking back in with another TDH upload. I know it's been a few uh, weeks since I've given you guys an update on the uh, 1983 Formula F20. It's been a bunch of redundant work, just kind of uh, cutting down plywood, mixing resin, laying down fiberglass, repeat that process like 15 times. It's kind of been it. So let me just go ahead and fill you guys in. I'm going to uh, show you what it currently looks like right now. I'll throw a picture in of the rough mock-up of the floors. I got the entire starboard side done for the floor. There's one little section that I had to uh, cut out a new piece to refit. So you guys will see that it'll be like a, I don't know, two or three inch space between the rear board and the front board. But I got the bulkhead back in there. I got uh, those large bulkhead blocks there. That's what uh, basically supports the bulkhead to the bilge wall. I got a, a new bilge side here and a new bilge side there. Let me just turn the camera around and make it easier. Alrighty, so we got a new build side here. Got that rotten wood replaced. That was all up at the end. The boards towards the back are looking really good. They're pretty uh, uh, structurally sound. Same thing over here. I had to cut back a bit further because a lot of this was rotted and uh, that's all squared away now. All fresh wood in there, fiberglassed in. Then you can see I've got my pedestal. I've still got to nip this one down, but that's the pedestal where the floor will be sitting here. I've already got that fitted up. Fits freaking great. And same thing uh, along this side. I've got the pedestal here. I'm going to add a little bit more in this area. And you can see one, two, and three. Those are where I have my small blocks that hold up the bottom of the board flush with the uh, bottom of the old floor here. So that guy sits in pretty damn well. Let me uh, throw a photo in there for you guys to see. And uh, you can see how it sits. I've got to make this quick because we are starting to get a little bit of uh, drizzling here and I don't want to get this floorboard wet and I don't really want any moisture in here because we're drying out the transom and I'll talk about that in just one second. But you probably, you guys probably saw the two, three inch gap that was here between the uh, rear floorboard, the stern floorboard, and then the uh, uh, cockpit area here, this entire starboard floorboard here. They had that gap right there. Well, I went ahead and cut out a nice piece that fits right in that section and also sits right in here in this area. So it comes out, steps over a little bit to this mark, and then it runs back all the way. Um, so once we go to lay down the floorboards and we mix up our cabasil, and this is all cabasil right in here. This is what I'm using to uh, join and strengthen uh, all of my joints. Uh, once we mix up that cabasil, we place it here on the pedestal so you guys can get an idea what it looks like there's the floorboard sitting on the pedestal the cabasil will go on this bottom portion on this top portion here we'll set the floorboards down we'll screw it down and uh, let the cabasil kick off and that will basically fusion uh, the joint to you know the floorboard to the actual stringer and uh, that, that that will be solid and once all of that is said and done and i lay that last board in there again on a little pedestal I'll fiberglass that all in as one unit. We'll probably end up doing uh, a layer on the uh, floorboards now. Uh, obviously, I'll pull this one out, do a layer on it. And then when I go to do this section, I'll lay some glass on it. And then when we're all said and done and the floorboards are in and in their final position and we cabasil them, then I will chase them probably with one more layer of glass all inside the boat. So before I, uh, I wrap this up and we do a lot more fiberglassing, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys back here on the uh, port side transom. The previous owners or whoever mounted the swim platform and the trim tabs, vice versa. Maybe the trim tabs came after the uh, swim platform, but they did an awful job. An awful job. You can see one, two, three, and four. These four holes were holding the swim platform. You guys can actually see it back there hiding. Let's see. There it is. So they had the swim platform um, support beam, your support rod, mated against the trim tab. So what that basically did was just, it just caused it to leak. And as you guys can see, the wood is a little wet right in here, a little wet right in here. And obviously it was wet in this midsection before we all knocked it down. This board is hard as a rock. That board is still good. It was just the front board that is... Uh, starting to go and I'm sure there's more moisture in this freaking transom. It's 40 years old. I am not going to tackle that type of job just because I 
that that's a that's a big job and if you know i go to sell the boat down the road obviously i'll be you know very transparent with this there's youtube videos of me working on this boat so once it's fixed up and it's good to go and somebody does complain or worry about the transom they can you know pay somebody to do that because that's a big job and everything is pretty solid all around here i mean the, the transom itself is very solid but th there's going to be moisture in it it's 40 years old there's there's nothing we can do so anyways we're doing preventative work here where they mounted that trim tab and that uh, swim platform holder they they just did an awful job it was totally taking in water there it could have been maybe you know a small little drip here and there but being below the water line i do not trust that and i wanted it fixed the right way thankfully jack came over here and uh, he was uh, able to help me dish all of this out and show me the proper way of repairing it i've been soaking it down with acetone we're going to do that throughout the week and uh, try to get as much moisture out as we can and then again we'll be mixing up some cavasil getting that uh, lay down on here and uh, we'll layer up some glass and we'll probably end up putting dowels wooden dowels in all of the holes every single hole you see will probably get a wooden dowel in it a resin soaked wooden dowel uh, we'll knock them in you know knock them flush sand them flush and then uh, chase them out with you know uh, cabasil and some fiberglass so that's the name of the game i just wanted to show you guys what was going on here uh, everything so far has been pretty solid uh, it's just kind of taken you know a little bit of time a little more time than i anticipated uh, mainly due to uh just work schedule and obviously weather permitting so that is that guys i'm gonna shut up i know i talk a lot we're gonna go ahead and uh, move on to glassing those floorboards down and uh, we'll wrap the video up after that we got our cloth cut down and fitted to our floorboards we've got it laid out here before we uh get to going crazy with it we've got to mix up our two-part epoxy and uh, we're gonna wet in our board first. And once the board's all wet in, I'll let it sit for a couple minutes and then I'll lay the cloth on top of it. And then we'll wet in the cloth on top of the board. That just helps, uh, obviously the resin soak into the wood a bit more uh, rather than robbing it from the cloth. And then it also helps the cloth adhere to the wood while we're uh, laying our resin coat on the top. And as we're rolling it, this is something that is gonna be a bit different for me. I've been doing everything with a paintbrush just dabbing it, lightly dabbing the resin into the cloth. And uh, I came across a channel called Fish Bump TV. He has some awesome, awesome, awesome fiberglass videos. They're very educational. He's got the greatest advice and I've just been diving into all of his stuff and it's been really helping me build the confidence uh, for this type of work. And then obviously uh, showing me, you know, little odds and ends and little tricks that really save a ton of headache. And one of them being when you're using a roller you can wrap your cloth your you know your cloth roller in some tape and you go ahead and you run that and that'll pull off all the little fibers and all the little hairs that you have inside of your cloth it's kind of tough to see but that's what came off the cloth and you want to you know obviously pull that off before you go dip dip a little bit of dunking that into your resin so that was a cool little trick from those guys i'm going to go ahead and list their channel below in the description because they've been um, just amazing with helping me uh you know on top of all of my friends advice and stuff it's just nice to see somebody who's a fourth generation boat builder uh you know talk about how to do this stuff properly so what i'm gonna do is uh mix up some uh two-part uh epoxy resin from west systems that's just one to one we'll probably do a uh, 10 pump batch i'll mix it in the cup i'll pour it into my uh, paint tray there and then we'll go ahead and wet in this board so let me do that and then I'll throw you guys on a time lapse and we can get to uh, doing some fiberglass work. Our floorboards officially have fiberglass on them. We are one step closer. I am very happy with the overall finish on this product here. That epoxy resin works really, really good. I did have a little bit of a learning curve using the roller though, if you guys notice in the time lapse. It's wet out about three quarters of the board using the roller. The roller itself really sucked up the resin so it was really tough to get it out of the uh, roller itself and get it onto the board. So once I had wet it out about, I would say three quarters of the way here, it started to get a little dry, I dabbed it back into the paint tray, wet it out again, and then I moved over to this side and did about half of this board and it was just dry as a bone. I was like, okay, 
Uh, I'm just gonna grab the paintbrush, mix up another batch. So I did another 10 pumps and uh, I put about five of those pumps with the paintbrush about halfway on this board. And then I peeled this back up, wet it back in and then laid out all the resin on this one. And then I followed back up with the remaining bit of those pumps to chase uh, this cloth out. So you guys can see there's these weird white patchy areas here. I promise those are not voids. Areas where I had to sand because we had a bunch of footsteps and uh, you can see like the boot marks and stuff on the boards from us test fitting them and standing on top of them. And uh, I didn't want that contaminating the resin or the uh, glass itself. So I went ahead and sanded that stuff down with some 120 and uh, it was probably a little abrasive as you guys can see that in there. I promise they're not voids. I've checked them, I've rolled them over, can't tell you how many times with the little roller. And I've even gone back and pressed them down with my finger just to make sure that there's no air pockets caught up in there. So that is about that guys. The, uh, the roller was definitely a learning curve. Don't really know how I feel about it. Like I said, it just holds that moist or, you know, that epoxy, that resin in there. And for some reason, maybe, you know, if I had gone in with 20 or 30 pumps, you know, a real heavy, uh, batch wet that guy out and then started rolling it rolling it rolling it dunk it back in there like I said with all of that um, You know 20 or 30 batch mix up. I think it may have uh, gotten you know pretty wet, but at that point in time I kind of feel like I'm wasting it and You know, I'd rather be a little heavier on the epoxy side than a little dry so that way it doesn't void and doesn't peel up But I guess it's just a learning curve just a learning curve. So that's that guys. Let me go ahead and close out this video. That's about all the content that I have for you guys in this upload. I'm gonna be picking up some more plywood up the road, hopefully the end of this week. If not this week, it'll be next week. So that way we can start fitting in for the floorboard that goes over the fuel tank. And then lastly, getting that uh, port side rear, like stern slash, I don't know what you wanna call it, midship area, get that floorboard uh, finished up, cut down, fitted in there. And that's obviously after we do all the repair work on the transom that you guys saw there where the uh, trim tab and the swim platform was attached. So once that's all cleaned up and we know that it's going to be uh, watertight and there's not going to be any issues with that, then I can get the uh, rest of that port side fiberglass in and uh, dropped into the boat, get that tank board done. And that's really it. Four boards will be done. We'll have to uh, pick up some two part foam and then we're going to figure out what we're going to do about the tank because I'm probably going to end up rebuilding the fuel tank because that thing is corroded it's got some corrosion on the inside and i think it just might be the, the right thing and the best thing to do because it's going to get sealed in there and i would rather have a fresh tank um that i know that i built that i know that i welded and went behind pressure tested it the whole nine yards to ensure that it's not going to leak when i get these boards in there for their final fit up and then once i glass them down because once they're glassed down i don't want to cut them back up so that is that guys. I know I ramble a lot in this video. I just want to bring you guys up to speed and show you guys the content. Uh, it's kind of redundant. Again, I, I, I hate that it's like that, but I just want to bring you guys, you know, along on this uh, build series. So uh, when I do get some more plywood or if we do get a hold of some uh, fresh aluminum for the tank, uh, I'll check back in with you guys and uh, pick up where we left off. So thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next upload. Later.